Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be covering how to solve systems of linear equations in two variables with the elimination method. So previously, we covered how to solve them with the substitution method, where we solve for one variable and then plug it into the other equation. Well, this one is a different method, obviously, where we actually kind of line up the equations and add or subtract the entire equations together to eliminate a variable instead of substituting it out. Um, so this one might be favorable to substitution in cases like that one last example on the substitution notes where we had a lot of fractions to work with because nothing really divided out or it wasn't easy to isolate one variable. Those tend to work better with elimination. Uh, but just like substitution, elimination can be used for any of the systems of equations that we're looking at. It really just comes down to a matter of preference once you've practiced both of them. So let's take a look at using the elimination method. Again, at the top, we have a couple different options, or <laughs> options, goodness. We have the step-by-step um, -step if you need to follow along with it. And then starting with number one. The main thing to look for when you're using elimination is first to have your equations lined up. So that means the x's should be together in a line, your y's should be together, and your constant terms should be together. Now they don't have to be in ax plus by equals c. Um, that part doesn't matter, just as long as they are lined up. That's what it means by line up the equations. Then, if necessary, you might need to multiply or divide one of them to get a match. Notice how the first term here is the same. So that's what I mean by a match. Since we have a match already, we don't need to do any multiplying. And now I need to determine whether I'm going to add these two equations or subtract these two equations. The way I determine whether I'm going to add them or subtract them is I need to determine how am I going to get this variable to cancel out. If I have a positive 1x and a positive 1x, adding them is not going to work. That'll give me 2x's. If I want to get rid of this, I need to subtract them. So that means subtracting the bottom equation from the top equation. Now, what does that look like? Well, let's take it one term at a time. On top, I have 1x, and I'm going to subtract 1x from it. I now have 0x's. I've canceled that out. And that's the goal of elimination. I want to cancel one of the variables. So I've canceled out my x's. Nothing there. Then I have positive 7y. I'm going to subtract a negative y. Now this can be tricky for some people. If you're subtracting, you have to consider where a double negative can occur. So since I have 7y minus negative y, that's really going to be 7y plus y. And that'll bring me to a grand total of 8y. Again, that's because I'm subtracting a negative y. And if I subtract a negative, it turns positive. So I have 7y plus y to get 8y. Then we've got the equal sign and 17 minus negative 7, another double negative. 17 minus negative 7 becomes 17 plus 7, which is 24. So I have subtracted these two equations and I'm left with 8y equals 24. Now all I have to do is divide both sides by 8 and I'll know what the y coordinate is. 24 divided by 8 will give me 3. Now the last part works like it did with substitution method. Once I know what y is equal to, I can plug it back into either of my original equations. I'll go ahead and plug it into the bottom one. So x minus 3 is equal to negative 7. Well, here all I need to do is add four to both, four, add three to both sides. 
and that reveals that x is negative 4. So my final answer is negative 4, comma, 3. Ta-da! So in example number 2, I'm going to look and see, is it lined up? Yep, I've got my x's together, I've got my y's together, and I've got my constants together. Now, do any of them match? Well, my x's don't match, but my y's do. And they're opposite signs, so I have a positive 2 and a negative 2. If I want to cancel these out, would I want to add positive 2 and negative 2, or would I want to subtract? Well, if I subtract 2y minus negative 2y, that double negative will turn it into adding. So if the signs are already opposites, I can simply add the two equations together. Now what it looks like when you're adding, take it one step at a time, just like if I was subtracting. We start with the x's, so 3x plus 5x will give me 8x. 2y plus negative 2y will give me no more y's. And then I carry down the equal sign. 22 plus 42 will be 64. And looks like I'm dividing by 8 again. To reveal, x is positive 8. So whether I add or subtract just depends on the signs of the numbers that match, the variable that matches. I'm looking for which operation I need to do to cancel them out. But once I do that and I get x, I can plug it back into either equation to find y. I'll go ahead and use the first equation. So 3 times my x, which is 8, plus 2y equals 22. So 3 times 8 is 24 plus 2y equals 22. Take away 24 from both sides, getting 2y equals negative 2. Then divide both sides by 2 to reveal y is negative 1. For a final answer of 8, negative 1. All right, so what happens if I don't immediately have a match? Here I have 4x and 1x, negative 9y and positive 5y, and then negative 42 and positive 4. So with my two variables, I have 4 and 1, and I have negative 9 and 5. I want one of them to match. And I think it might be easier to make the, the x's match. Because all I have to do there is multiply this one by 4, and they will match. Now it's up to you how you do it. There's a lot of different ways to do this and get the right answer. Um, personally, I like to make my signs the opposite. That way I can add them together, and I don't need to overthink the subtraction. So that is to say, if I multiply this bottom equation by negative 4, I'll have a 4x and a negative 4x. That can easily cancel out by adding the two equations together. So rewriting this equation multiplied by negative 4, it'll look like negative 4x. And then negative 4 times positive 5y will be negative 20y. That's equal to negative 4 times positive 4 is negative 16. Then on top, I'm just going to rewrite it as is. That way everything's nice and lined up and ready for me to put these two together. Again, I chose to multiply by a negative 4. That way they are already opposite signs, so I can easily add these two together. If I had multiplied by a positive 4, I would just need to subtract the two equations. So adding them, 4x plus negative 4x will give me no x's. 
Then we have negative 9y plus negative 20y, which will be negative 29y. And then over here, negative 42 plus negative 16 will be negative 58. So I've canceled out the x's and I'm just left with a y. Now I can divide both sides by the coefficient on y, negative 29, to reveal y is positive 2. Again, I can take that and plug it back into either of my original equations to figure out x. I'm going to plug into the second one. So x plus 5y equals 4, which means x plus 10 equals 4. If I take away 10 from both sides, x is equal to negative 6. For a final solution of negative 6, comma, 2. All right, looking at our next example, again, x's are lined up, y's are lined up, and constants are lined up, so everything's looking good. Only thing I need to do is get one of the variables to match. Now, 6 and 3 are pretty close, but I would need to multiply the second equation by 2 to get them both to be 6. Now I'm actually going to multiply it by negative 2 to also make the signs the opposite. That way I'll have a negative 6y and a positive 6y. So let me rewrite that first equation. And then below it, I'm going to write my second equation multiplied by negative 2. So negative 2 times 2x will be negative 4x. Negative 2 times negative 3y will be positive 6y. That's equal to negative 13 times negative 2, or positive 26. Because I multiplied by negative 2, I have y's that match with opposite signs, so I can add these two equations together. 7x plus negative 4x will give me 3x. Negative 6y plus positive 6y will leave me nothing. And negative 53 plus 26 will be let's see, 24, 27, negative 27. Now I can divide by 3 to both sides. And x is negative 9. Now I can take that and plug it back into either original equation. I'll pick the bottom one. I always tend to go for the ones with smaller numbers because I'm less likely to make a mistake. So 2 times x, which is negative 9, minus 3y equals negative 13. I'm going to simplify. 2 times negative 9 is negative 18. Minus 3y equals negative 13. Now I can add 18 to both sides, giving me negative 3y is equal to positive 5. And last but not least, divide both sides by negative 3. And we actually get a fraction for this one. That's okay, it happens sometimes. So our final answer is negative 9, negative 5 thirds. The reality is not all systems of equations are going to have a nice whole number solution. Um, the reality is usually messy. They have lots of fractions and decimals, but for the purpose of practicing the skill, I normally keep it whole numbers. Anyway, moving on to example number five. Looking at my equation, everything's nice and lined up already. I just need to figure out how to get a match to cancel them out. Sometimes I might need to multiply both equations if there's not one that's easily 
multiplied to get to the other one. Now I technically could multiply by a fraction. Um, like if I multiplied the top equation by something like 2 over 5, I would get the x's to match, but most people don't want to work with fractions. So instead, we can opt to multiply both equations by a whole number or an integer. So for example, if I multiply this top equation by negative 2 and the bottom equation by positive 5, I'll be able to get the x's to match because this will become negative 10 and this will become positive 10. So let's go ahead and rewrite those after multiplying. So 5x times negative 2 will be negative 10x. Positive 3y times negative 2 will be negative 6y. And negative 7 times negative 2 will be positive 14. Then 2x times 5 will be 5, oop, not 5, 10x. And then positive 7y times 5 will be 35y. That's equal to 3 times 5, which is 15. Now I'm ready to add these two equations to eliminate the x variable negative 6y plus 35y is going to be positive 29y and 14 plus 15 is positive 29. Dividing both sides by 29 gives y equal to positive 1. Now I can go back to either original equation uh, let's go ahead and do 2x plus 7 times y of negative 1, or positive 1, excuse me, is equal to 3. So 2x plus 7 equals 3. Take away 4 from both, oh my gosh, take away 7 from both sides. My brain is working ahead. 2x equals negative 4. And divide everything by 2 to get x equal to negative 2 for a final solution of negative 2 comma 1. So again, it's okay to multiply both equations um, to get something that's pretty easy to cancel out. And if you thought of a different way to solve number 5, like different ways to multiply it, as long as you get negative 2, 1 at the end, it means you've done your work right. All right, moving on to number 6. Again, there's a lot of different ways I could handle number 6. I could multiply them to get something um, that matches. I could also divide, since multiplication is just the inverse of um, division. I'm allowed to do that. What I noticed about the first one is all three of these are divisible by 3. So if I divide by 3, I'll get just x. Same thing on the bottom here. Everything's divisible by 4. So if I divide by 4, I can get just x. So let's see what that looks like. Dividing everything by 3 and dividing everything by 4. My top equation will become x minus 3y equals 3. And then my bottom equation, dividing everything by 4, will be x minus 3y equals 9. Hmm. Interesting that both my x's and my y's ended up the same. Let's see what happens. So to cancel my x's, since I have a positive 1 on each, I would need to subtract my equations. So x minus x will be nothing. Negative 3y minus negative 3y becomes negative 3y plus 3y, which also becomes nothing. So we have nothing left. And 3 minus 9 is negative 6. Hmm. 
Do you remember what happens when we get a statement that is false? If you guessed no solution, you were correct. So these were parallel lines, same equation, different y-intercept. Um, and that means that when we try to cancel things out, we're going to get a statement that isn't false or isn't true. And that means no solution to this system. So again, don't freak out if you get a statement that is false. It doesn't mean you've done all your work wrong. It could just mean there's no solution. All right, final stretch. I'm not going to do the applications part in this video. I'm just going to stop after example seven and eight. Just the elimination method for now. This video is long enough, I bet. So once again, looking at our problems and whoa, we are not lined up. Our X's are not lined up. So we're going to need to fix that first before anything else. So I'm going to reorganize this. So we have 5x minus 6y equals 3. And I'm going to move the x over here. But again, I can't just move it. Technically, I'm subtracting 2x from both sides. So we get negative 2x plus 7y is equal to 8 as a result of moving it to the other side. Okay, now that my x's, y's, and constants, everything's lined up, now I can make a plan for canceling it out. Now, we have similar numbers on the example right above this, so I'm just going to do the same strategy. Why not? We have a 5 and a 2. We have a 5 and a negative 2. So let me multiply the top equation by 2 bottom equation by 5. Since my signs are already opposites, I don't need to worry about multiplying to make the signs opposite. And that'll give me, let's see, the first equation, 5x times 2 is 10x, minus 6y times 2, 12y, equal to 3 times 2, which is 6. For my second equation, negative 2x times 5 is negative 10x plus 7y times 5 is 35y. That's equal to 8 times 5, or 40. Now I can add these two equations together to cancel my x's. So 10x plus negative 10x cancels. Negative 12y plus positive 35y will become 23y. And 6 plus 40 is 46. Dividing both sides by 23, we get a y of positive 2. Now I can plug that back into my original equations. Let's go ahead and plug it in to the bottom one. 7 times 2 equals 2x plus 8. So that means 14 is equal to 2x plus 8. Taking away 8 from both sides, we get 6 is equal to 2x, or 3 is equal to x. For a final solution of 3, 2. So if you need to rearrange your equation, I recommend doing that first making sure everything's lined up, and then devise a plan for how you're going to multiply it. And we got the same problem going on here. Things are not lined up across the board. They're not that far off, though. I just need to switch the order of these two. So I can go ahead and rewrite this as 10x plus 18 equals negative 8y. And then on the bottom, just switch the order. 9x plus 4 equals 5y. I don't need it to be in the standard form where the x and y are on the same side. All that matters is that things are lined up. x is together, constants together, and y is together.
Now that I do have them lined up, I can devise a strategy. So 10 and 9 don't really have any common factors or common multiples except 90, which I'm not too keen on multiplying that high. Um, so maybe I can work with the 8 and the 5 instead. Their best bet is 40. So I can multiply the top one by 5 and the bottom one by 8 to get this to be negative 40 and positive 40. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply. That'll give me 50x plus 18 times 5 is 90 is equal to negative 40y. And then 9 times 8 is 72x plus 8 times 4 is 32. That's equal to 40y. Since my signs are opposite, I'm going to add these two equations together. That'll give me 50 plus 72 is 122x plus 90 plus 32 is 122. And my y's cancel, leaving 0. So to get x by itself, I need to take away 122 from both sides. 122x will equal negative 122, meaning x is equal to negative 1. Now I can plug that back into either original equation. Let's do the first one. 4 plus 9 times negative 1 is equal to 5y. So it looks like 4 minus 9 is equal to negative 5y. Oop, I don't know where that negative came from. Pardon that. Negative 5 is equal to 5y. So negative 1 is equal to y. For grand total solution of negative 1, negative 1. All right, so just remember with elimination method, you are multiplying or dividing one or both equations to get one of your variables to match. Like you want them to be the same value. They can be the same sign or opposite signs. That'll just tell you whether to add or subtract your equations together. I personally like to always make them opposite signs. That way I'm just adding each time and I don't really have to constantly switch my brain back and forth. But it really is a personal preference thing, whichever you feel the most comfortable with. And you'll figure it out as you practice. So with that, we're done with our examples and good luck with your practice. Bye.